Now I'm going to show you my finished bowl after I've colored the entire thing. I'll put a little bit of solvent on that. There's the underside. And here's the inside of my bowl. Now while I was filming yesterday, one of my video clips was damaged in some way. I won't get into it because I don't know really what happened. Sometime when your battery runs down or something, a video clip just doesn't work in your computer. It was the main clip showing how I was staining this from the bottom of the bowl into the inside and it was lost. I did save quite a bit of it, but just keep that in mind that, uh, you know, it is what it is, but it still came out pretty cool. I really like it. And uh, I like the color combination. So stay tuned and I'll show you what I did. Now I found this piece of box elder and it's just basically a thick piece of veneer. And I thought before I start the main video, I try to duplicate what I lost yesterday from that video. So let me apply a little bit of dye to the back side of this and we'll see what happens. Now I'm showing you the pipette I'm going to be using in the main part of the video. Now when you're applying stain like this, there are a couple things to avoid. One is not diluting the color enough. In this situation, my color is really dark. So as it bleeds through, it kind of becomes one big mass of color. And I can take some lacquer thinner later on and just wash that out a little bit. Now that's a good shot of what should happen. And that's what I lost yesterday in that one video clip. Let me get another um, pipette filled up. There we go. And it's just that simple. And the cool thing is you don't have much control over this. You just put the stain on one side and it'll seep through to the other. There we go. That's how it works, my friends. Oh. Now I've got my pipette filled up with a little bit of yellow. So let me apply a contrasting color and see what happens here. Okay, now the idea is if you start with a very thin piece of wood and this little bit of veneer is really a quarter of an inch, it's not very thin, but it's very porous and well, it worked pretty good. I like that. Let's go on to the main part of the video where I stain the bowl. Well, this topic is going to be on coloring wood. I've had this little bowl sitting around for months. I finally sanded it to about 600 grit and I'm going to color it. I often color a hollow form like this from the inside and wherever there's some distinctive figure or grain that stain will seep through there, it'll wick right to the surface and that's a great way to start coloring a piece. Here's another one that I've been working on. One product I would like to kind of mention here is Matte Finish by Krylon. This is an acrylic finish. It's a very matte finish, rather dull, and if that's what you want. Sometimes this is used in, in art where they're doing a pencil sketch and they want to put something over it or something like that. I put a couple coats of this finish on these little pieces right here and ordinarily I do hollow forms and that will allow me to put whatever finish I want on top of that so anyway I'm gonna do this bowl right here and I'm gonna do a little coloring I've also got my little stand of colors these are trans tint you can use whatever you want you can use uh, aniline dye or whatever. And I've got uh, six different colors here. Okay, now I've got a little bit of color mixed up here. This is a dark green. I put a little green in there and some brown and yellow. That's what I got. I'm using a trans tint dye that I get from Stuart McDonald, the guitar making 
company. I'm going to use a pipette. This is used to apply stain or take stain from one container to another. So I'm going to put some stain on the outside of this bowl and hopefully you can see it seep through to the inside. Ordinarily, if I'm doing a hollow form like this, I do it from the inside. Now one of the issues you're going to have if you do this, if you apply a lot of concentrated stain in a certain area, it's going to turn that really dark and almost black if you put too much dye on there. So let's, let's go ahead and see what we get. Now I learned a lot of my coloring techniques from Chris Pitlick. And he's awesome, he does a lot of coloring. And he's the one I saw the pipettes being used. I like to have a couple of these filled up so I can just kind of go back and forth. So let's uh, go ahead and do this. Now it was at this point that I lost my footage. I was filming with another camera and I lost that clip. Okay, here's my bowl so far. There's the outside. And that looks like a mess, but what you can actually do later on is you can apply some more color and kind of fill in those spaces. I don't like the, the natural wood. So I'll take my airbrush and kind of fill it in. You can also cut that back with some sandpaper. And right here, i got some nice figure right there, kind of a, um, I don't know, ripple or something. You can sand that back, and it's really cool. Now what I have is some blue and red. So that should make kind of a purple. We'll see how that does. Okay, so I'm going to take my purple dye and I'm, I'm going to try to avoid the areas that I've already colored because that tends to turn really really dark and I can see a little bit coming through I'm going to come right up here on this rim. Yeah, you get the idea. It's pretty cool. And you have to be really fairly thin when you do this. This is probably less than a quarter of an inch, maybe three sixteenths or so. Now when you're applying dye or stain of some sort to a piece like this, you can mix that color a couple different ways. You can mix it in a cup before you apply it, or you can put one color on and then put another color on top of it and that will bleed together. One thing that's good to do is to put a color on and let it dry. Let it dry for a day come back the next day and put another color on. Um, that will make your colors a little bit more distinctive. All right. Now, again, the outside, I'm okay with that. I can sand that back, but I want to fill all that area in. The inside is starting to look pretty cool. Now, I've been applying a little bit of yellow. You can see it on the outside rim right here. And it's bleeding through, so we're getting three colors to come through to the inside of this bowl. I'm going to turn my camera off and apply a little bit more of this yellow and I'll show you some close-ups. Now there's some pretty cool grain on the outside of this bowl and the inside. I'm going to just cut that back with a little sandpaper and it'll be pretty neat. The inside, I need to fill in the white areas that I haven't uh, gotten stained to, but you can see where the dye just bleeds through wherever there's grain or some sort of figure. And you're thinking, well, that's not very scientific. It really isn't. It's pretty simple. And you get what you get. You don't have a lot of control over this. So there's the inside of that bowl. That's pretty wild. And I'll show you this when it's finished in an upcoming video. 
I like that a lot. It's pretty crazy. And there's the outside. Well, thank you very much for watching my videos. And if you have any questions or comments about coloring wood, uh, just uh, send me an email. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you later.